Hi, I'm Roberto. I'm Brad. And today we're going to go over pipe patch extend. Every kit comes with an uh, instruction sheet, which also has kit contents and equipment checklist. So the first thing on the kit contents is your fiberglass, gloves, ties, tape, work surface, two protective sleeves, resin, and your spatulas. Next, we're gonna go over the equipment checklist. This is gonna be everything that's not in your kit that you're gonna to need to perform the job. So we have our Packard uh, regulator, your flex adapter. This is gonna go on the end of the Packard. A pair of snips, tape measure, knife, push rods. These are gonna be mostly pulled into place, but there'll be some situations where you're still able to push these. So have your push rods. You're gonna have your pull cable sewer camera, and then an air compressor, and air lines. All right, now that we've gone over our equipment checklist and our kit contents, we wanna make sure that we follow the directions that come on every single box. So we need to transfer a measurement. So to do that, we need to make sure that the pipe is clean, and then send our camera down to the spot that we want the repair to be. So, as I'm running down the line, I'm making sure that the pipe is clean, free of debris. And we pre drilled a hole in this pipe, and that's gonna be where we want our repair to stop. So now that my camera is just past that, I'm gonna take the tape that came in the kit, mark it with your hand, and put a physical measurement right on your caber. Then go back in and check your mark. That's exactly where we want it to be. Now we're gonna transfer our measurement. So I have Brad holding the camera on the far pack outline because that's where we want our repair to stop. So Brad's holding it there. We're getting everything as tight as we can possibly get it. And now I've transferred my measurement to my cable from my camera. This is gonna be where we stop pulling when we go to install our repair. Okay, before we go any further, we wanna make sure that we test all of our equipment. So I have all the airlines I'm gonna be using for our live run, our flex adapter, and our packer is slid in our, our, into our test pipe. So what Brad and I did was we laid the packer right next to it and drilled two holes at each pack out line of our packer. So then we know that when we put the proper PSI in it, we're able to see the pack out lines. So now it's just about touching the pipe. So we want to check it. And add just a few more PSI to it. We want it to feel like a fully inflated basketball. So today our pressure is 38 PSI on this packer in the conditions that we're working in. Okay, next we're gonna put our protective sleeve on our packer. What this does is it keeps the resin from getting onto the rubber of the packer. Get down here. Okay. Make sure that sleeve's in the middle of your packer. Put the packer in the middle of your sleeve. You're gonna pinch this tight. One fin is gonna go up, the other fin is gonna go down. We take our tape and we secure that to the packer. 
You want to really stretch this tape, get it on super tight. You want to come all the way past the nose of this packer so it kind of locks that that plastic onto your packer so it doesn't want to slide off when you're deflating and, and pulling your packer. Take the edges, tab your edges. If you have something to grab onto once this is caked with resin, things like that. And then come down here to this end and do the same thing. So you're gonna put that packer in the middle of your sleeve. You're gonna pinch it tight around that packer Whatever side went up down on the other end needs to come up on this end. So this side went up, this side goes down. And again, come all the way over the nose of your, of your packer. So it kind of locks on, doesn't allow it to slide off. Once you've got your sleeve put on your packer, you have this big air bubble on the inside. And when you go to put your patch onto your packer, we want that patch to be on this packer as tight as it possibly can. Well, that air bubble is preventing you from being able to get it on as tight as you can. So what we need to do is make air vent holes in these fins that you created when you put these put this sleeve on. I'm just gonna cut like a quarter inch slit in every one of them fins. So you should be making four cuts in your plastic. And you wanna cut these as close to the tape as you can. So that way when your resin migrates, it doesn't get to your packer. And this is a prepared packer. This is for a dry run or your live run. Now that we've prepared our packer, we want to make sure that we prepare everything else. So all the air connections that you have anywhere need to be taped so that when we're going into the pipe, they don't get bumped and come free. I also tape the first little bit of our cable so that it can't back feed and end up in our patch. So we want to make sure we do this before we do a dry run or a live run. So now I'm going to walk this way. Brad's going to follow me. Good. Pull your latest one in. Good deal. Perfect. So we want to make sure that we can get all the way back to our original tape mark that we put on our cable. Now that we're able to successfully get to our tape mark, we're gonna pull this back out of the line and we need to swap out the plastic sleeve that goes on the packer. Now that we've replaced our protective sleeve, now it's time to, to load the patch onto the packer. You're gonna take the edges to your pack out lines. Pack out line right there is good. Before you wet your patch out, you need to prepare your wire ties. You're gonna stack them on top of each other and then you're gonna give both ends two or three twists. One, two, three. Line them up, make sure they're still on top of each other. One, two, three. So two ties together is actually one tie. Before we go any further, we want to refer back to our checklist so that we know we're not missing any steps. So we've tested our equipment, we've transferred our measurement, we've laid out all our materials, we prepared our packer, we performed a dry run, and then after the dry run we've actually 
prepared the packer again. Make sure you write down your PSI so there's no questions when you go to do your live run, what to take your packer to. And right now we're just gonna take a step back, make sure that everything is where it needs to be, our compressor's on, our airlines are hooked up, cables are hooked up. Everybody knows what they need to do um, in their specific jobs, so that way when you're wetting this out, you know, once you pop these pins, it's, it's go time. So everybody needs to know what their job is and when they need to do it. So we don't want any hiccups, so we want this to be as flawless as possible. So everybody knows what their job is. Yep. And then right before we start, we're gonna write down our time. All right, before we wet out and start mixing, one last final check. Brad and I each got two sets of gloves on, put our apron on to protect our clothes. Um, don't wear anything that you don't want to get messy because once the resin gets on, it stays forever. So we have our ties ready, we have our snips, resin, I think we're ready to mix. Yep. Okay. All you're going to do is pull the tab on the bottom. And the mixing process starts. What we're doing right now is taking the material on each side, kind of pinching it the same way we would um, go closer. Pinching it the same way we would try and do the protective sleeve. So getting the material as close to the packer as we can, um, pinching on each side, and then actually folding up in this scenario, and then taking the tie, cinching down, and twisting. And then it's going to be three half turns. And then on the front edge, always going to have two, because that's going to be the edge that takes the most abuse. And then make sure that you snip all the way down. I want to leave about a half an inch or so. You don't want to cut it so close that the ties fall apart before you get it in place, but you don't want them so long that they have trouble breaking.
hook up our cable. And then they're gonna start a slow, steady pull. up your regulator and now we're able to go directly to our preset number that we wrote down in the box. Okay. Then make sure you follow the cure chart on the box. Wait the proper amount of time depending on the situation you're working in and then pull your bladder. Now that we waited our allotted time, it's time to deflate the packer and pull. Again, I'm Roberto. I'm Brad. And we're from Source One Environmental. If you have any other questions or concerns, check us out online at s1eonline.com.